Hey y'all, today we are going to make some fried whiting served with some spaghetti. Now I know it has been hotly debated in my comments whether fried fish and spaghetti is a real thing. I know Chicago know about this. Midwest, you better go ahead and check in. If you are in the South, okay, I know some of y'all say we don't do this in the South, but I'm telling you, I have seen spaghetti served as a side dish with fried fish or fried chicken. I've even seen it served with a fried pork chop before. So let me know, is spaghetti a main chick or a side chick in your house? And let's go on and get started. Now, whenever I'm serving spaghetti as a side, I like to do a base of turkey and sausage. I just think turkey is a little bit lighter and the sausage just gives the turkey more flavor. So I'm going to cook the turkey and sausage until it's about three fourths of the way done. And then I'm gonna add in some onion, garlic, peppers, and a little bit of celery and carrots. I know that may seem a little odd, but the carrots add a nice sweetness and the celery adds a good taste. And since it's chopped up so small, you're really not going to realize that there's celery in here. I'm going to season this well because I am using canned tomato sauce and crushed tomatoes that have not been seasoned. I've come to stop buying spaghetti sauce pre-made because it dawned on me one day that really all they're doing is adding a few seasonings that I already have in my house to some tomato sauce. So I may as well just buy the canned tomato sauce that costs a bit less. The only exception to this would be the Rails brand. I feel like that tomato sauce for some reason just has a very clean superior taste. And when I use that, I actually don't add very many seasonings at all. To this, I'm gonna put in some cloves and a bay leaf. They're gonna add a nice subtle flavor. Just remember to fish out those cloves later on. And then I'll put in some fresh oregano, but you could use fresh basil or fresh thyme. I've even used fresh rosemary before. I'm gonna cover this and let this simmer for about 20 minutes on low. Then I decided to put in some dry red wine. So I'm using some Marsala wine, about a half of a cup, but this is optional. I know some of y'all I don't mess with the alcohol okay then I'm gonna cover this again and allow this to simmer for about 40 more minutes but you can decide how long you want this to cook at minimum you do need to allow this to cook for 30 minutes to get the best flavor I've even seen people put this in the slow cooker and let this cook for a few hours and that is delicious I felt like this was perfect but the only thing it needed was some sugar okay this is <laughs> I know some y'all don't do this but baby I like it in mine to add some richness, I like to add a bit of olive oil, but if you use beef, especially one that has more fat, you don't need to do this. And I know y'all know how to cook up some noodles. So while that spaghetti has been simmering, I have been working on the fish. This is some whiting. I had to defrost this and rinse it off and I just patted it dry. Since I am going to be making my own fish fry, I'm going to actually season the fish itself with a little bit of Creole seasoning, lemon pepper, and MSG. You know, if you don't like MSG, don't do it, okay? Don't come for me. Then I'm going to mix up my fish to make sure everything is well coated. Because y'all know whiting is actually quite bland. I prefer catfish, actually, because catfish is really moist. But I know, okay, I know there's there's some people that going to come in my comments with a Bible telling me that catfish is a bottom dweller and thou shall not, thou shall not. Okay, so for all those people... I am showing y'all how to make some whiting. But you know what? If you worry about my soul, don't be. Because I'm 100% making it in heaven, baby. Okay. Now that my fish is well seasoned, I'm going to show y'all how to make a really good binder. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and crack in two eggs. Now, <laughs> got a little shell in there this time. But you know what? If you get a little shell in there, just use the shell to fish it out. Have you ever added some mayo to your fish binder? I know some of y'all don't rock with the mayonnaise, okay? But if you put in, you know, a couple tablespoons, the oil in it just makes your skin on your fish nice and crispy. And especially when you're dealing with whiting, I feel like it makes it more moist. So I'm gonna beat this together well and then pour this all over my fish. And I'm gonna make sure that it is well coated. 
This is important because if you don't coat your fish well, then you're not going to get enough of that fish fry to stick and your fish ain't going to be crispy. And I feel like that defeats the whole purpose of frying it. If I'm going to fry my fish, at least it's going to be crispy, okay? Now, if you've enjoyed this recipe so far, don't forget to give the thumbs up because, honey, I am bringing you guys new meal ideas every single week. You do not have to buy a pre-made fish fry. A lot of times they are really salty. So I do at times like to make it myself with a little bit of cornmeal, flour, and then whatever seasonings that I want. So today I'm using some lemon pepper, some garlic, Creole seasoning, a bit of MSG, salt, and pepper. But if you don't have these seasonings, you just use whatever you like. You could put in Old Bay. I have used some Chef Papadon Seafood Magic. But if you do decide to fry your whiting with a pre-made fish fry mix, do not add any seasonings to the whiting at all really but if you do want to add some make sure that it does not have any salt or else your blood pressure is just going to be going through the roof okay so i'm going to add my fish into my fish fry in a tupperware container with a lid this is my favorite way to do it i just like to you know shake 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 and it's going to get well coated and then if there is any spots that are open or don't have enough fish fry in them i will just press on a bit of the mix and shake off any excess you do have to shake your fish well because any of the fish fry that is not attached to the fish will come off in the oil it will start to burn and then it will give your oil a bad flavor which will impact the rest of the fish fillets when i am done coating the fish i am going to set them aside on a baking tray so that they can rest while i am heating up the oil My favorite thing to fry in is my Dutch oven. So I've added some canola oil and then I'm heating it until it's at least 350 degrees. I like to use my meat thermometer to just check the temperature of the oil. That way you don't have to have a special thermometer just for oil. Okay, this is really inexpensive. Then I'm gonna use some chopsticks to just turn my whiting around just a little bit so that it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. I like to avoid having too many dark spots on my fish. I like that all around golden color, which just looks really nice. I am going to fry this whiting for about five to six minutes. You don't want it to go too long because you don't want your fish to dry out. When you see it starting to look golden brown and the coating starts to look crispy, you will know that it is ready. Remember I was telling you about that fish fry that can come off in the oil? Well, some will still come off anyway, but between batches, you need to go in with a skimmer and scoop up all of those bits so that your oil can stay fresh. And then I will just throw those away. Then I am going to fry up my next batch of fish. Because of the size of my Dutch oven, I'm not gonna do any more than three at one time. If you crowd your oil, then it's not gonna get crispy. So guys, this is the completed meal. I added on a nice little side salad and some lemon wedges for the fish. Let me know if you're gonna make this and if you enjoyed this recipe, God bless you guys and I will see you next time. Goodbye.